Constitutional Conversations is a series of discussions by America's leading scholars about the principles, framing, ratification, and implementation of constitutional government in the United States. This series is hosted by the James Madison Memorial Fellowship Foundation of Alexandria, Virginia. What was it in the Federalist camp, that is those who were in favor of the new constitution, persons like Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, who had helped to write that constitution. Why does Hamilton speak of the great Montesquieu, the great man Montesquieu? Why does Madison call him the celebrated Montesquieu when they are trying to argue in favor of the new constitution? It's an interesting fact about our university academic culture now. I said we, we do spend much more time thinking about Locke, uh, other late Enlightenment philosophers, say Immanuel Kant, uh, and we forget that in the Federalist itself and in the ratification debate, figures who scholars now refer to as the moderate Enlightenment uh, are much more important. So Montesquieu is cited repeatedly in the Federalist and by anti-Federalist writers. William Blackstone, a great English jurist, who, who cites Montesquieu as an influence on his thinking about the Constitution of England. Blackstone is cited in the Federalist. Uh, David Hume, Scottish Enlightenment, these more moderate figures. We as academics tend to like the more bright line and somewhat more radical thinkers like, like Locke or Immanuel Kant or Hobbes or Machiavelli. So he, Montesquieu is celebrated because he, The Spirit of Laws is a very comprehensive, it's a large book, comprehensive book trying to make uh, very well-rounded, balanced arguments for what a politics of liberty is and could be, what a more moderate and humane politics could be. And uh, even though Amazon.com was not around at the time, the book sold like hotcakes. When it was published, the Spirit of Laws is published in 1748 in, in, in uh, in, written in French, fairly quickly translated into English. It sells all over Europe. Translations are made into other languages. All the major language groups of Europe have within just a few years, even into Russian, uh, have translations of the spirit of laws. And then uh, Montesquieu had visited England in the 1730s to learn about the political culture of liberty, the constitution of liberty, as he called it. So there are two long chapters in the Spirit of Laws about this new kind of politics that Montesquieu calls a blend of a monarchy and a republic that has a separation of powers, uh, that is a powerful, capable state in, in world affairs, but is not uh, uh, too much of one thing or too much of another. It has elements of a monarchy and that it has a powerful navy, it's a presence in the world, but it has raucous political liberty and the rule of law and, and a complicated constitutional structure. Well, this ends up being very important for the American colonies for thinking about their forms of government. Then in the arguments for revolution and forming separate states and constitutions, they have this political science tex textbook to draw upon. Uh, and each side, think, each side thinks of him as celebrated for the reason that he, as you said, he's a baron. He's of the high nobility in France, but arguing for liberty and the rule of law and a moderate politics, warning against more absolutist monarchies, saying some good things about republics and blending monarchies and republics. So the, the sort of comprehensiveness and the balance of his philosophy uh, from a, a nobleman who could have just defended the old order simply uh, makes him this, this really, to use a phrase, a celebrity uh, uh, intellectual uh, figure. <laughs>